Okay, hello, hello everyone, hello YouTube. Uh, I hope you all are doing good. So ultimately I decided to make a video in front of the camera here because unlike my previous uh, videos, I, where I just do math on the board and put some music in the background, I think it is time that uh, I come, um, I mean, I do a video in person. So, um so to get into things um i thought maybe why not do some math celebrating the legend the uh the famous indian mathematician s ramanujan so maybe why not uh you know to celebrate him do something uh maybe do some of his work in on the yellow math board right so before i do that i just remembered the this particular movie, uh, the man who knew infinity, and so uh, maybe there is one portion in that film where uh, there's this uh, cruel Har Cambridge professor. So he is doing this particular integral on the board, and he sees Ramanujan, and Ramanujan is just smiling, and you know, then he asks Ramanujan to come to the board and contribute to the integral, and Ramanujan just writes the solution out of nowhere, and the professor is stunned. So uh, let's try to do that integral here. So the integral, which is basically integral zero to pi by two d theta divided by square root of one minus k square sine square theta. And so this is basically pi by two times one plus k square half square plus k raised to four times one times three divided by two times four the whole square and then plus uh, one times three times five divided by two times four times six times uh, k raised to six and so on okay so basically this integral is equal to this series on the right hand side so we'll try to prove this so before that i'm going to evaluate another integral so which is basically uh so here's the proof so if you pick a number a which is less than one then this particular integral integral zero to pi by two um, dx divided by one minus a sine square x this is basically equal to pi by 2 1 divided by square root of 1 minus a okay so to prove this uh what i will do is i'm going to use this identity sine square x plus cos square x is 1 so if you plug it here instead of 1 what we'll get is integral 0 to pi by 2 dx divided by 1 minus a sine square x plus cos square x okay and uh, so you just add there and then do some do the algebra there so you will get this and so this is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 uh, now what I will do is I will divide by cos square x so what you get is basically 6 square x 1 minus a tan square x plus 1 dx okay now what I will do is so basically, because the derivative of tan x is 6 square x. So this implies that we can make a change of variable y equal to tan x. Okay, so let's do that. So this will be integral 0 to... Okay, so the limits will also change. So this time, if we change the uh, variable y equal to tan x, so we have dy is basically... Uh, 1 divided by 1 minus a y square plus 1 okay and the limits will be basically because 6 square x is the derivative of tan x so dy is equal to 6 square x dx okay so this becomes 1 by 1 minus a y square plus 1 now tan 0 is 0 okay and tan pi by 2 is infinite so you write that and now what we can do is we can pull out 1 minus a, 1 by 1 minus a. So that you, this comes out and integral 0 to infinity dy divided by y squared plus 1 by 1 minus a. And now this is equal to 1 by 1 minus a 
well, you can write this as zero to infinite d by divided by y square plus one by square root of one minus a whole square. Okay. And now we know that uh, the integral d by y square plus um, any number, let's say alpha square, is basically one by alpha tan inverse y by a, y by alpha. Okay. So this is the the antiderivative that we know. So if we can, if we plug it back, what we'll get is this is equal to one by one minus a, one divided by, so basically alpha is here, uh, it's one by square root of one minus, one minus a. So this is square root of one minus a, and then tan inverse y divided by one divided by square root of one minus a, and then you plug the limits zero to infinite, right? Now, if you plug the limits, what we're gonna get is, so this is square root of one minus a, and so we have tan inverse infinite is pi by two, tan inverse zero is zero, so the result is pi by two, one divided by square root of one minus a, okay? So let me write down what we have proved just now. So it's zero to pi by two dx divided by one minus a sine square x is basically pi by two times square root of one minus a, okay? Now the magic happens because the integral that we are after is integral of zero to pi by two d theta divided by square root of one minus k square sine square theta, right? So what I will do is I will substitute a is k sine theta, right? I can just substitute a for k sine theta. And so what I will, and then I will integrate it. So let's do that. So, um, so pi by two, one by square root of one minus k. So I will do square, right? Let's substitute k square sine square theta. So this is equal to integral zero to pi by two dx divided by one minus k square sine square theta sine square x, okay? And then what you do is basically integrate both sides with respect to d theta. Integral zero to pi by two d theta, right? And now bring the pi by two to the right hand side. So um, zero to pi by two d theta divided by square root of one minus k square sine square theta. This is equal to two by pi integral zero to pi by two, integral zero to pi by two, dx d theta and one by one minus k square sine square theta sine square x, okay? Now note here that k sine theta sine x, if you take the absolute value of this, this is less than one, okay? Except possibly for, you know, finitely many points, finite number of points but this is less than one. And so the integral is, uh, it won't affect the integral. So you can say that this is less than one everywhere. Okay. You can assume that it's perfectly fine. Uh, so let's, the point of doing this is basically, uh, if you take the summation of a raised to n, n zero to infinite, uh, and if the absolute value of a is less than one, this is basically one divided by one minus a, right? So instead, I'm going to substitute k sine theta sine x here, right? So what I will get is summation n zero to infinite uh, k raised to n sine n theta sine n x is basically one divided by one minus k sine. So I can substitute square, right? Here also square, because if square is also, if you take the square as well, it's less than one, so you can do that. Uh, sine square x. Okay, so now what I will do is I'll just plug it back into the integral. So what will happen is two by pi integral zero to pi by two, zero to pi by two, summation n zero to infinite k raised to two n sine two n theta sine two n x uh, dx d theta is what is basically uh, this integral, right? So this is 
the integral that we want, the theta divided by square root of one minus k squared sine squared theta, okay? Right, now what we'll do here is that we are gonna pull out the summation outside the integral. We can do this because if you have done some measure theory, if you know a little bit of measure theory, then you know that there are some people as Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. And if you know that, you can check and you can even prove that you can pull out the summation. But for now, let's uh, not go into that. So this is basically now, I can just split this integral. So summation 0 to infinite, integral 0 to pi by 2, sine to an theta, d theta, integral 0 to pi by 2, sine to an x, dx, and you have k raised to 2n, okay? Now, what is this uh, integral here? So we see that the both of them are the same. Uh, the variables are different, but the integral, the result will be the same. So mm -hmm. integral zero to two, zero to pi by two sine two n theta d theta is basically, it's nothing but, it, this is called as Wallace, Wallace integral, okay. Uh, so, what you have is this is basically nothing but pi by two times two n minus one double factorial divided by two n double factorial, okay? So what's double factorial? So let me explain what's that. So if you take the double factorial of an odd number, say five, it's basically five times three times one, okay? So you're collecting all the odd numbers from one to five. And how about four double factorial? So this is basically four times two, so basically you're collecting all the even numbers from two till the number here is four, okay? So that's basically uh, the double factorial notation. So using this, if we substitute into our summation here, so in n zero to infinite k is to two n, um, what you have is pi by two, two n minus one double factorial divided by two n double factorial and then square. Now, pull out the, sorry about that, pull out the pi by 2 square and you have pi by 2 summation n0 to infinite k raised to 2n, 2n minus 1 double factorial divided by 2n double factorial and of course there's a whole square. If you expand this, you will see that this is nothing but, so when you plug in n equal to 0, this is 1. And when you plug in one, it's basically k square, one by two square, because this is one, this is two. And now when you have four, basically when n is two, uh, this is three double factorial, which is basically three times one. This is four double factorial, which is basically four times two, and then square, and then plus k raised to six. And this is basically five, double factorial five times three times one and this is six four two square and plus etc so we see that we are getting the exact result that ramanujan wrote on board okay so um that's how you do this integral and um yeah so there are a lot of steps to do this particular integral here but when ramanujan did this on the board he just did it within a fraction of seconds. Um, so yeah, so if you are still with me, if you're still here till the end, then thank you so much. This means a lot to me. And if you like what I'm doing here, so the channel is still building and there, like I know a lot of work needs to be done, but if you like my video, then please consider coming back to my channel again. And um, yeah, that's it. So this is my yellow board. So the concept here is that I'll be doing a lot of math here, a lot of fun math, a lot of math to, you know, teach people so that everyone is uh, accessible to, you know, um, higher math. Uh, so that's, that's my idea here is just to, uh, just to teach math. So that's it for this particular video. This is my first video and, uh, yeah, I think, thank you so much. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. And uh, 
Uh, please take care and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.